All right, let's do an experiment here. We're going to go back to 1989, and we're going to try and see what, well, computer-based audio is like. So what was it ba like back then? Well, okay, here were your options. You could get yourself a sound blaster or something close to that equivalent. You could put it into your PC here, like this compact portable 386. You'll get beeps. You'll get boops. You will get voice, but it's not going to be all that good. In fact, it's going to be kind of poor. Maybe you'll still be using speech synthesis with your games, but... When it comes to, like, saying, doing podcasts or something like that, or, no, that's not going to happen. That's not going to happen at all. One, you're going to run out of disk space. Two, it's just complete crap. And what about on a Mac? Okay, let's look at the Macintosh 2 there. There would be a system that would be able to do it. Still isn't there yet. We're still not at that high end to professional level of graphics, or not graphics, to of, uh, sound <laughs> that um, we're, we should be expecting out of a studio level production. And that's mainly because, one, the CPUs are a bit lacking back then. Two, there just wasn't a way to move the data fast enough to get us, say, 44.1 kilohertz or anything like that. Now, what I'm about to do here is I'm about to switch over from using the microphone in the camera, and I'm going to use a uh, very 80 solution. And because, well, digital signal processing was finally catching on in 1989. There. Done. We're now using a, a DSP-based microphone here. This one here is called the Aerial Microphone. And as you can see, as I get closer to the camera here, we have uh, a nice little indicator here. It's a stereo microphone, I'd like to point out. So you can see me talking here. For some odd reason, this channel here is not working. I don't know why. We have two microphones in the top here underneath the cap. There should be a foam wind guard on it. But, um, well, almost 30 years in storage and just simply by existing this foam has turned into goop and there's still a couple of battle scars on here that I have to scrape off but no good and on the back of it we do actually have two three and a half millimeter input jacks here so we can again add um, two devices or whatever the heck we want in stereo I could add a whole other microphone externally and we could still continue on this conversation but inside of this thing there's not a whole heck of a lot there's a lot of uh, through-hole components. There's, there's no DSP in it. There's uh, DACs. That's it. The actual digital signal processing travels through this wire, and in this case, it travels to this next station here. One thing I like about Next machines is that they contain a Motorola 56000 DSP, and that's what's doing all the magic here for us. It's um, taking the signal, it's converting it into a digital format, and it's able to store it to the disk as fast as it can. It's doing it a hell of a lot better. The CPU can go off and do whatever it wants. And the audio sounds good. We're currently using uh, stereo mode. So this is 44.1 kilohertz. We can use a manual mode, and that's 88.2 kilohertz. And I can do all sorts of modifications there. I can add effects. It's all done in the DSP. Um, this machine here only has a 250 megabyte hard drive. So I'm actually limited to about five minutes of recording right now, and it's currently installed state. But it's not all that bad. And um, we would still see this um, 56K DSP pop up more. Um, DigiDesign would be using it in their new bus cards. Um, we would see them in PCs as well. A couple of audio cards use them, but uh, they were later used quite specifically with uh, modems. And in fact, here in Next Machines, there were a couple options where you could get uh, fax modems or um, data and voice modems that could also use the DSP as well. There was a number of um, DSP devices that were available for Next. So we had the Arial um, IR cam board, which was basically just a farm of DSP chips on a um, Next bus board. We also had the Daydream ROM box, which basically plugged into the DSP port and uh, turned a Next computer into a full-fledged Mac with full hardware uh, support. Um, other than that, yeah, it was a great device. This microphone here originally would have cost you about $600. Uh, the machine, as you see here, 25 megahertz, 68040, uh, 8 megabytes of RAM, 250 megabyte hard drive, keyboard, mouse, monochrome monitor. That would have set you back about $5,000 in 1990, 1991. And, uh, yeah, for under $6,000, you get yourself a pretty good and high-end recording solution that would beat the crap out of anything stock or cheap that you could get for both a PC or a Mac. Not bad at all.